What we're going to do now is we are going to fabricate a drive shaft. What is a drive shaft? This little dog bone. Many times you'll find these broken, broken off. You do a remotoring project, you don't have one, and most people they go online and they buy some. But there is a better way. And it'll cost you like nothing. This here is a piece of copper wire. It's a ground wire out of regular household wiring. Okay. Whenever I do some wiring and I cut off an end, I always take the wires out and keep them because this is a good this is a good piece of metal right here. And that is what we want to make our drive shafts out of. Now, good drive shafts of which these Atlas ones are, are well, the, despite being plastic, which is a downfall, and they've got these little nubs on them, which if, if the, it's been subjected to oil, can break off. What's good about them is their design is that one, sh the horizontal shaft goes this way, and then when you turn it, the other one is perpendicular to it, goes that way. That is the drive shaft you want. You do not want it to be a straight one this way, one that way, parallel to each other. They work better when they're like this. What happens when they're parallel to each other is they will slip. They'll slip out the sides if that's possible. Let's take a look at this. Here is the flywheel that we are going to use this time. I know I always say I don't use flywheels, but I'm going to this time. See how it has that cut all the way through when this drive shaft is in here when it's in here if the motor one and the the one that uh, connects to the worm if they are the same sometimes it'll go like this and it'll slip out the side and that happens frequently but if you make them so that they are not they're not lined up with each other, so if they're opposite, they work way better. All right, so first, I did one already. Let's see if you can see what I did. I soldered a little nub on there, and that happens to be perfect. I just eyeballed it. Now, the trick to doing this is, well, first we need to straighten this out. It's got a bend in it, so I'm just going to put it on the anvil here. Straighten it up a little bit. Now, if you want it really, really uh, nice, what you do is you'd hold this off the end of the table. You'd take something like your anvil or, or something else, and you would rub it back and forth as it twists around, and you'll get a totally straight wire. Like, I don't know if I can do that on, on here because I'm not on my hard point, and this anvil is not big enough. But if I rub this back and forth across this wire, and it starts going around like that, I can eventually make a totally straight piece of wire another way is you clamp this into a vise and you pull real hard on this and that will straighten it up all right so now i've got my shaft what i need to do now since i've already done one let's stick it down here and i'm going to cut it off i'll make a mark with my little file here about just below the little nub there. Okay, now I can see where that is, and I'm going to take my cutter. I'm going to go to that mark. And cut it off. This copper wire is nice and soft for cutting. Okay, doesn't line up pretty good. Yeah, that ain't bad. Next, I'm going to take my pliers, and I'm going to hold on to it very tight. Actually, I'm going to hold on to it inside one of the jaws, tight like this. Now, let's make some space here. Take my fiberglass cutoff wheel. First, I'm going to flatten it. Okay. Now... I'm going to notch it just a bit in the way I want it. 
Remember, I'm trying to trying to get this one to be the opposite of it. I'm going to notch it just a little bit. Okay, little notch. That one's ready, and I'm going to stick it in this jaw right here and hold on to it. Okay, next. I cut off a little end here. This is going to be my my little little shaft there. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take my little pliers here, and I'm going to hold it, and I'm going to take file, and I'm going to file a flat spot. Just like that. Now, here comes the important step. You know what this is? This is that stuff I told you never to use. Acid paste flux. We have come to the part now where you're going to use it. You need to have it anyways. So you can, you know, you use it on your soldering tip. And I'll show you something else I just got. This is called tip tin. This looks like a little powder. Stick your tip of your soldering iron in there and it's instantly tinned. This is just a huge saver on soldering tips. Love this stuff. Uh, I think I got it on Amazon. Tip tinner. Awesome stuff. All right, I've got some acid paste. Oh, I got it. Okay, now I'm going to take some acid paste right here. And I'm going to put it on my flat spot. All right. Why are we using acid paste? Once upon a time, when I first started and I was soldering, especially on blue boxes, blue boxes have spring steel in places you need to solder. And I was having trouble soldering stuff to it. And I was using a big 250 watt gun and I was melting plastic and I'm at the auto parts store and the guy tells me well you should be using acid paste for steel sure enough that changed everything suddenly I was able to solder stuff like nothing but I did not know back then that you need to clean it off because you've probably heard that acid paste will cause corrosion that is true. If electricity passes through it and the acid is still there, it'll cause, it can cause corrosion. There are three ways of dealing with that. Way number one, baking soda. Baking soda on your part and then wash it off. Number two, acetone. Put acetone on your microfiber cloth and clean it off. Number three, paint it. Paint it, seal it in. If you, so and for those of you that lay track, when, when I started doing fast tracks, I didn't watch their soldering video because I thought, oh, I already know how to solder. And I know that electricity is going to pass the track and I was using rosin paste. Problem is, when I installed those switches, so many of them fail so frequently joints come unsoldered finally i watched the fast tracks instructional video about soldering and they say and it is totally true any soldering joint that you make that is mechanical in any way by that i mean something that's got to have a force a physical force applied to it you use acid so when you lay your track, you solder it with acid, and then you clean it. Baking soda, acetone, clean it, wash it, then paint it, and you're good to go. And since I used the acid, I'm pulling up old switches that I did without it. None of the ones with acid have ever failed. So that is why we are using acid. And... Even if you know everything about soldering, the Fast Track soldering instructional video on the on the Fast Tracks website is one that you should watch. I'm going to put some acid on this tip here that I did. We're going to tin it. Tinning means applying solder before you make the join. 
and we need a strong joint. So we need to have a good tinned end here with, and we use the acid. Okay, now let's put some more acid on here. Now here comes the tricky part, because my hand is not that steady. I need to, first I need to line this up. All right, let's see how I'm gonna hold it first. So I've got it, I think if I hold it this way, I'll be steady enough. So I'm gonna turn this so that they will line up different now. Can I do this without running into that? No, I cannot. All right, so we gotta move these jaws around so I can actually do this. And I wanna find my hand position first. And I wanna be able to rest my hand on the desktop and solder onto it because I'm gonna to need to get extra solder on it. Now, right now I don't care about the length. I'm gonna trim it when I'm done. If I have a good mechanical joint, it will not come undone when I solder this. So let's see if I can get this thing to hand level, okay. Now that I've messed this up on the workbench, I need to put some more acid on it. Okay, now I'm going to get a bunch of solder on my soldering pencil here. Okay, now I've got the side I want. Let's make sure we turn it. Okay, looks good. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it's got to be... It's got to be mostly, oh man, it's this, okay, wrong pliers. We need to use a pliers that does not have an auto release on it. We don't want that springy pliers because it's, it's making it hard for me to hold on to it. Okay, let's try that again. Do I got enough solder? Okay. Now, I want to get my shaky hand in position where I'm resting, and I do not need to hold it real hard, and I want it to be held good so I can do that on both sides. Ooh, that's pretty good. That's pretty decent right there. Let's take a look at that. All right, that video just cut off where I had, I cut this by eyeballing it and then I checked it in the socket. Now I'm gonna have to join these two videos together and just missed the part. All I did was I cut it off by eyeballing and then I fit it into the socket and it fits perfect. So this is an excellent, and I don't know, did. I used acetone to wipe it down with the orange cloth. I don't know if that part got in there. But anyways, I cleaned the acid off with acetone. Okay, now I'm going to just smooth the sharp end just a little bit. There we go. Now we have a beauty of a replacement, and they match. So that's pretty sweet. That's that's good to go. And that is a drive shaft replacement. This one is way stronger. Now, what I can do, if these are not perfectly lined up the way I want them, I can actually twist it. I can twist this because it's co soft copper. So I can make them just right. Then, if I don't think this is straight enough, I mean, it looks, it looks pretty good. I'm going to take my lineman's pliers here because it's small enough and just give it a squeeze. 
squeeze it right in the middle and nice and straight that is a drive shaft and that is how I do it when I don't buy them I make them this is fabrication situation new drive shaft now I don't need this one but I'm going to put it in my bin of extra shafts and things that I've made. And I'll have it for later.